Welcome back to this module on arrays. In this second part, we'll cover basic usage of arrays. To get started, we'll use what are called static arrays, which are allocated on the program stack. When you declare a static array, you specify its type and name just as you would with a regular variable, but you also specify a size within square brackets. Here I've declared two arrays, one integer array named ARR, which holds 10 integer values, and a double array that holds 20 values. Once you've declared an array, you can start using it by indexing individual elements with the same square bracket syntax. Once you've indexed an individual element, you can use it like any normal variable, assigning it a value or using it in an expression. You can also declare and initialize an array at the same time using the following syntax. You use curly brackets and specify a comma delimited list of values that you want stored in the array. When using the syntax, specifying the size is optional because the compiler can infer how big of an array you need to hold the given values. Compilers are dumb, but at least they can count. In this example, I've chosen to omit the size specification. This is a good example of what's known as code elision. Elision refers to the omission of words or syllables in a language that nevertheless preserves the meaning. The omission of the size doesn't change how big of an array is allocated. However, it's still our responsibility to keep track of the size in order to work with it. C99 and later versions also allow you to declare a static array using a variable size. That is, instead of hard coding a value in the size specification, you can use a value stored in a variable, as in this example. However, just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. I mention variable length arrays because you will likely see them out in the wild, but you should avoid using them in general. There are several pitfalls to avoid when working with arrays. Just like regular variables, C does not specify a default value for values stored in an array. In our previous example, we didn't set the fourth element, the element at index three. Thus, the value stored in there could be anything. Never make any assumptions about the value stored in uninitialized variables. Instead, always initialize array values if you need them to have certain values. Another pitfall is accessing invalid indices in an array, which always leads to undefined behavior. In this example, we've declared an array of size 10. Valid indices would include 0 through 9. Accessing the value at index 10 or negative values will be invalid. This can lead to any number of bad results, including a segmentation fault, corrupted memory, or generally incorrect results. It is always your responsibility to do proper bookkeeping. Bookkeeping means always keeping track of the size of an array and ensuring that indices do not go out of bounds. In general, there's no way to determine the size of an array. Only in extremely limited circumstances, specifically locally declared static arrays, is it possible. In the vast majority of situations, it's not at all possible. Therefore, arrays should always be accompanied by an integer variable to keep track of its size. These variables are often used when looping over arrays, which is generally done by an idiomatic for loop. Let's go ahead and write an example. Let's go ahead and create an array to hold the first 10 prime numbers. Now as it is, the compiler will be able to figure out that it needs an array of size 10 to hold these things. But if I want to do my own processing, say iterate over it and sum them all up, I need a variable to store that value. Now let's go ahead and write a for loop to sum up each one of these numbers stored in the array. This is a typical idiomatic for loop to iterate over elements in an array, where n is the size of the array. We'll need a variable to keep track of the sum. And remember, there's no default value. There could be a garbage value stored in sum right now. Always initialize your own variables. We use the index variable i 
to access individual elements in the array. Again, part of this idiomatic for loop is that we use index variables, typically i, j, k. These are generic names that are not good in general, but since they're modeling index variables, their use is perfectly fine here. Let's go ahead and test this. I'll let you verify that this is correct. 